I just wanted to holler at y'all real quick. I had a thought on my mind I wanted to share with you guys. A lot of people wish and inspire us to do things like this, like go on tour and, you know, be in front of people and tell their story. But are you willing to do the groundwork, the in-between stuff? Are you willing to push through the suck sometimes just to get the mission done? You want to go on a world tour, but are you capable of doing a class and flying out the same night and doing it all over again the next day? If that's something you're not willing to do, then don't even try. If that's not something you're willing to do, then you got to ask yourself, is this something that you really even want? And what's the reason why you even want to pursue this path? Are you willing to do a class one day, wake up early in the morning the next day, and fly to another city to do the same thing all over again? You're on the Barber Lounge venue for today's class. It's gonna be a packed house house today. Packed out. Oh, these mirrors is dope. I had seen some mirrors like this. It's at um, ISSC. They was like a thousand dollars each. Yeah, bro. They like the drawers pull out and everything. Let me see. That's crazy, bro. Sick chairs too. Like old school. Old school chairs, vintage chairs. Got the outlets up top. It's gonna be our projector slash backdrop. I didn't have a backdrop at the last class. I had to go outside and take pics, but they came out dope. But in Seattle, a little muggy outside, I won't get that same effect. No, no sunlight. We still make mistakes. When you cut a new head, you're not gonna know. I cut the same clients every week at the shop, and sometimes it doesn't turn out exactly how, you know. You get better at doing what you wanna do and it, and it working. You know, that's kind of what I was trying to teach you guys today is the more systems you have, the more, you know, I always go back to high school scientific method. You want as many things to be controlled and the less variables, right? So the further you get, the more you'll have that. You'll use the same tools, you'll be cutting the same clients in the same chair in the same shop, same techniques, and you'll start to get to where you're pretty consistent. But you're, you're, it's, it's not gonna be like that at first. So, especially at school, like, I don't know about, are, are you in school? Uh, yes. You're in school. All right. So my school had a big sign that said, work is done by students. Basically, come get a haircut at your own risk, right? So you're allowed to mess up. This is the time to mess up. You got to make to make an omelet. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to learn. You're going to get in the shop. You're still going to mess something up. Um, it's, I mean, it's inevitable. But obviously, like, the best thing you can do is each time that is, try to identify what happened and, and what you can do better next time. Uh, and you'll just do a little bit less and a little bit less. You guys were at working full time or whatever. How long did you guys spend uh, doing like a consultation with the client? So me, I, I'm glad you asked and that like question. How in depth would it get? No, know, I'm glad it would yeah. go very, very, very in depth. I will probably spend the initial part of the conversation probably like five to ten minutes, okay. um, getting the overall picture of what I'm going to get, and also explain them, explain to them things like about the haircut that they're getting. I try to keep it super simple. I try to take you know degrees and everything out of it. It's more so short, long, heavy hair, things like that. More so focus on their body movements as opposed to what they're actually saying. This process is important because if this is going to be a long-term client for you, you invest in the time into them to talk about exactly how they want the hair and educating them about hair, that's going to be easier for you. So the second, third, third time you cut the hair, you don't have to explain to them that you're layering their fringe in or leaving it as heavy or this is the weight line or this is skin, this is zero, this is a one. Like they already know all this stuff. It depends on how invested you want to be with, with that client. If you want this to be longevity, bro, pour, pour your all into them, right? I'll give the initial consultation five, 10 minutes. And then I'll also, uh, at each identify points, whether it be the sideburns, the fringe, the nape, those areas that you want to taper here or this there. You want this there or this there. So I don't have to go back through and redo a haircut all over the field. Again, this is a business we are on time slots. So you talk and walk through everything so there's no confusion. Yeah, I think a lot of times we mess up on consultations because uh, it's easy to ask the wrong questions when we're starting, especially. So I don't, one client can tell you they get a two on the sides and the next guy can get a two on the sides and it'll look totally different, right? So I don't care what number you tell me. Like, do you want to see skin? Do you want to see through? Do you want to see through your hair and see some of the scalp? You know, do you, is this, are you somebody that's gonna style your hair? Cause you know how many haircuts we cut that really need to be styled or they're gonna look terrible. So somebody that's like, no nah, man, I, I'm a get up and go type of guy. You know, those are the, the questions I'm asking. At the end of the day, like they're the client, they're not the barber. You know, we, we get every now and then we get somebody that knows a little something about haircutting. But yeah, like there's a lot more important questions than what number on the side. I think that's the standard question that barbershops ask and why people get bad haircuts all the time. Those questions aren't as important. Yeah, identify like, do they want to taper or not? But like, I, I'm, I'm worried about, are you gonna put product in it? Are you gonna spend time styling it? How often do you wash it? How often are you gonna get a haircut? You know, those type of things are important mm -hmm. to give them the best haircut. They Your job is to take what they're saying and they have no idea about cutting hair right. and give them what they want and interpret that. So that's something also you get better at, but I, I would not 
be so concerned about what number they tell you they like or you know like take an inch off More the, the top. Overall look. Yeah, 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 take an inch off the top. Uh, they might not want an inch off the top, but they just you know like kind of you, you just want to see how it's wearing for them. I'll tell people like I'm gonna take this much off. You know, wear it. Next time you come in, let me know if it was like got got too long, too fast, or yeah. stuff like yeah. that. You know, hey, I'm not gonna go to skin because I think it's gonna grow in better. By the next time you come in, if you hated it, we'll, we'll go back to a fade or whatever. And you just yeah. like same thing he's saying. Really educate your clients and really pick their brain on the important things more so than like what number they think they want on the size because yeah. they don't know. You, yeah, you right. could do the wrong, you could do a totally different haircut on them. Like, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Right. So like, let's let's ask the important questions and give them the best thing that you can give. I think one, especially when you're cutting new clients, one thing I like to ask is one, do they have a picture, like an example for reference? And then if it's a picture of themselves, obviously if it's your first time cutting their hair, I would ask them, what didn't you like about the last haircut that you got? Because obviously you're in my chair for a reason, right? So it's like, what didn't you like that you would like me to address in this, you know what I'm saying, in this hair? That's, an easy, you, that's an easy win too. Yeah, because as long as you do that part, yeah. then usually you lock them in. What they prioritize. You know what I'm it's, saying? it's funny that you said that, like uh, the whole picture, right? Yeah. So I have like a lot of clients, I'm a new Barber, right? Mm -hmm. Building up my clients on stuff. Sometimes I'll ask a client, be like, yo, do you have a picture of yourself, right? They never have a side profile. It's always like front. Oh, and so man. you can't see anything, right? Yeah. And so the side profile is usually the best. Yeah. But you can see the bangs, that's, that's, the bad. that's an interesting yeah. point though, because yeah. all they ever see is the front. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so not to say don't do a good job on the back because right. they can't see it, but <laughs> think about <laughs> think about what they can see right, from, right. from what they're gonna notice. Not to not do as good on the rest, but exactly to the point. Point, what do they notice about their hair that they don't like? Like, does it does it wedge out or does it stick up in the back? Like, because they can only see certain parts. So. They prioritize it. Uh, so, like the way the barber like industry is like going up now, what would you say is like the most important thing that you need to have like on point? Like, as far as like I feel like you know how fade is not really good enough yeah. anymore. So, what would you say is like the next thing? Is it styling? Or just I think being well rounded for one. I think scissor work is coming, like your hairstyle is coming. That all of us are gonna be doing that all day in the shop within a few years, I think. I think long, I think just fades and tapers and all that is not like it's ever gonna go away, but I think like scissor work is gonna be something you, that you need to know how to do. And I, I just think being versatile, no matter what. I mean, I don't know where you guys are all from and what your clientele look like. There are areas where it's like one type of clientele. But like at the end of the day, like we should be able to cut anything that walks in. So I, think I, like, so, so I, I feel like it's that's more of a skill like point for me. I would more so focus on the defensive part. I feel like that's what kind of changes and shift the barbers who go pretty far. I would more so focus on like who you are as a person, like what you like and what you don't like, and then focus on like where you're trying to go. Go ahead and set it in stone, have a definite definite purpose. Like me, bro, I knew I wanted to teach. It was a, it was a passion. It's it's fulfilling the feeling that you gave me every time I did it. So I knew I was working towards to get to that point. I this is my diamond, like. Once I got it, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm looking for the next thing, but like, um, it's still gonna be some realm of teaching. I knew I wanted to be an educator. So figure out what you like, whether you like working at a shop or a studio or being a creator, or working by the chair or being an educator, content creator. Like it's so many different things that you can do under this umbrella, under this career and make and you can make it, a, make it a business. But you gotta be happy first and, and know what you're trying to do. In my experience, like like I said, I, like Sean was telling you guys earlier, I oversee all of our shops. We have six shops in Zen. And some of our best barbers are the worst act, like they're the worst barbers. They just know how to treat people. Most of the people out who come and get in, get their haircuts, they don't really care if you took this class. You know what I'm saying? Like in, in most cases, like they just want, like you said, can you make them feel good? And making them feel good is outside of you just being able to cut their hair is the experience that they get when they're with you. No offense to anybody if y'all work at Supercuts, but why do you think they're in business? They're not in business because they're putting out the best haircuts. It's, the it's their experience. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's the neck shave or or like like you just said, the conversation. People care about how you make them feel. Like you guys are consumers too. What makes you want to go back somewhere? It's, it's good work, but it's more of the service. Why do you go to Target instead of Walmart? Like people in Target are probably more nice than they are at Walmart even though I'm gonna pay a little more, right? So I wouldn't get so caught up in being well, the next Sean or the next Kendricks or the next Bossio or, or, or Barbara Josh OP is how can I treat, you're in a service and how can I treat my customer with the best service possible? And that's gonna take you way further than doing a great hair. And I must say that is true. Just from, just by being at school with uh, Tristan, we have a lot of customers that actually been coming in at school like over 20, 20 years. And they're coming yeah. because they feel good. It makes them feel good. And that is right. Interpersonal skills matter. 
I used to thought, like when I was younger, I thought my barber was the best barber ever until I like moved to Florida and then I got around some real good barbers. And you're like, bro, like if you look at your Facebook memories and you look at your haircuts, you're like, oh. Sh <laughs> I mean, you thought you thought your barber was was God on earth. You know what I'm saying? It's like people, most people don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like they they don't care. I just worked in the Jamaican barber shop. This one dude was absolute, but he was one of the only dudes that spoke like fluent patois. So everyone that was straight from the yard, mm -hmm. straight from Jamaica, first time back out in the city, whatever, they went straight to him because they felt comfortable. Yeah, like he understands how I speak, what I do, how I move. Like it's, it was the biggest thing. Like. You know, like you said, it's like they're comfortable. I want to go to him and feel good and make him feel good, look good. You might not even be the best barber, but it's that comfortability. They know they can go to him and feel comfortable in that chair. That's a good point, Drew. Bro. Well, that was dope. Just a crazy experience. It's something I always dreamed of doing. Like, I used to dream of going on tour as a kid, but I thought I was gonna be a rapper. And I never imagined I'd be doing this. Barbering is definitely a love of mine and super passionate about teaching. So to be able to go on the road and do that and pour it to others, it's just an amazing feeling, man. It's something I plan on doing more going forward. We got a class in Houston, February 19th, me, Sean running in the back, and we got Basio gonna be in the building, man. That's phenomenal, man. That's my mentor and a friend, and just super surreal to be doing a class with him. This trip was fun, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the behind the scenes of, of what it's like to be a barber on tour, teaching private classes, you know, traveling, or just what you gotta go through to do this. I'm, I got in the house at 1 a.m. last night, spent zero time with my family and i'm waking up this morning i'm back in the shop and my fiance was living and crying this morning it hurts man as much as i want to stay into the day off just have at least one day to chill with them i know that this time that i put in consecutive days i'm just grinding it out man and sticking to the plan it's gonna pay off so thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time peace